Hi, how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, taking you all the way back to 1984 and some of the great arcade games we were playing in 84. Now you gotta remember 1983 was like the video game crash here in the United States. So video games were still happening, they were still out, but there was kind of a different vibe going on. Here are just a few of the arcade games you were playing back in 1984. Beastie Feastie was the name of a game I remember seeing. I wanna say I saw this at our local country store. And if you're from around the Yakima Valley in the 80s, you'll remember the country store. I'm pretty sure that's where I remember seeing this game. Well, I couldn't quite figure it out either, but I just remember going up and down the elevators was kind of the fun thing to do, and then collecting the fruit along the way as well. Now, I am playing this through emulation. Naturally, I do not have this arcade machine. And I'm thinking one of the buttons maybe didn't work. I want to say you were able to call the elevators down to your floor, but I couldn't get it to work on this, so... But still, when I saw this, I was like, I remember seeing this game. And yeah, 1984. How about it? Does this game unlock a memory for you? Good lord, here's Bullfight. Yeah, that's right, they made a bullfighting arcade game. And as you would imagine, uh, two buttons on this game, one of them is to kind of, you know, wave your cape around a little bit, and the other one is to stab the bull, unfortunately. But again, that's what bullfighting is. It's literally, <laughs> it's literally in the name, bullfight. Well, it could be called bull, well, you know. This game was interesting uh, to me. I want to say I remember seeing it in the arcade, but man, I don't know if it was Mandela Effect or what it was. You just got to get close enough to the bull, hopefully they'll charge you, and then you just got to, you know, stab them on the way through, you know? And if you don't, well, the bull's going to get you, and you got three lives, or there's, you know, three matadors, I suppose, that, you know, that'll get you, and they'll chuck you right out of the arena. Bullfight, my goodness. Well, how about a game you've probably heard of? In 1984, we had 1942. Well, this is one of the OG shooters of its type. So many vertical shooters today take note from 1942. It's one of the originals and still one of the best. Simplistic by design and nature, just shoot down the other planes and you can get power-ups to increase your uh, shooting ability as well. You do not have a weapon crash. Now, along the way, uh, the games like this, you'll have like the bomb you can drop or kill all the enemies on screen. Uh, that might, they, a plane might drop that instead of like, you know, uh, a power up for your weapon. But in this case, you have a loop de loop, a rotation button, which will make you dodge out of the enemies. It'll make you dodge the bullets. Yeah, you can only do it so many times, though, which is unfortunate. But, you know, I suppose if you had unlimited ability, you'd just do that the entire time and avoid all the enemies uh, all the same. Capcom was already around during this time, but 1942 was one of the first games I remember thinking, oh, okay, I see where you're going with this Capcom. I guess we're going to see what we have in store for the future. And well, you know where Capcom is now. Also interesting to point out that in 1984, the game 1942, well, it would be like if they made a game today called 1981. Yeah, this happened 42 years ago. Yeah, there's a 42 year difference. So give it three years time, and that way it'll be the same year of difference between 1984 to 1942 than it will be for 2026 to 1984. What, what, what? This watch I'm wearing? You're wondering about the watch I'm wearing? Well, now that we're talking about 1942, I can also tell you that our good friends at Aviate are making 1942 watches. That's right. Now, Aviate. I just realized that their name is AV8. AV8. Good lord. Anyway, is one of the premier cost efficient watchmakers, and they've teamed up with Capcom to do some watches based on 1942. Just look at the quality on that, right? Now, these are in limited quantity, only 300 per style. And I can tell you about how they're scratch resistant and water resistant, and with an anti reflective sapphire lens, solid steel. Case, oh, I shouldn't have done that. The <laughs> solid steel casing as well as the band. They did send me this. They did not expect a video out of me, but I'm going to give them a video anyway because I think these are super sweet. And again, link in the description below if you want to find yours. Oh, I would not. Just like that. And maybe you played 1942 on the NES, but it came out in the arcade in 1984. There's a couple of other NES games that you may have played that came out in the arcade in 1984. I'm sure you've seen this game. That's right, we got Kung Fu. Well, in the arcade it's called Kung Fu Master. Kung Fu as we know it on the NES. Same idea, same premise, it's the same game. You can punch and kick, and again, the up button is your jump, so you don't get a third button or anything like that in the arcade, just because NES has two buttons. You get a punch and kick, and then up is jump. The boss gets you, and it does the dumb laugh. <laughs> 
something that'll haunt your dreams for a little bit, but when you defeat the boss, you can laugh as much as you want. Ha 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 I'm gonna keep on going and I won't make it very long. It's all good. Bomb Jack. Now you might know this as Mighty Bomb Jack. Well, Bomb Jack in the arcade is just that final part of the stage. Not the when you're going through and bopping on the heads and collecting items and stuff like that. Just the collect all the bombs in the screen. Now you can see that there's a lit fuse on one of them. If you grab that one, it will be bonus points. You do not need to grab that one to move on to the next stage, but you will get extra points. So if you're looking for a high score, that's the way to do it. If you just want to see how far you can get, don't have to worry about it. Same idea where you can jump and then hit the jump button again and you'll immediately fall. I like that mechanic in this game. In fact, if you keep hitting that button, you'll kind of drift and glide, which is also very, very handy in this game. The NES one's kind of wonky. I never really got into the NES one much, even though I played it a ton. Uh, but this is, you know, it's cool to see the, the arcade version of this, too. To see where it came from. And not just NES. We also had a Sega Genesis game that came out in 1984 with Flicky. Now, I just talked about this game in the games that were released on the Genesis in 1991. So, several years later from the arcade to the Sega Genesis. But still a fun game and it still plays great. Uh, you know, to put simply, you're the blue bird. You have to pick up all the yellow chicks, or birds, I suppose and get them through the door. If you have a whole tail full of them, you'll get bonus points, but you can also just put them in the door one by one, avoiding the cats. It looks like the screen scrolls, which it does, but it's still kind of a single screen, as you can tell. So, you know, something to keep in mind. It's not like you're, you know, like going on and on and on. It's just when you go inside one side of the screen, you just come out the other. And instead of just having it being a static screen, it follows you instead of, you know, you, you know what I mean. 1984, what a, what a crazy year for video games. This is a game called Mickey, and as interesting as this game is, this is Konami now, from 1984. What an interesting idea. Now, this game, it takes place at school in this atmosphere, and you have to bump the people out of their seats and then sit down so the teacher doesn't, like, grab you, I suppose. But you're trying to find all the hearts, and the hearts are going to make what opens the door, what's supposed to open the door. I couldn't get the door open. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm also playing this through emulation, so I don't know if I'm missing a button or what's going on. I need to watch a walkthrough for this. But this is an interesting, at least the first part of this game is this. And then um, other stuff later on, I did look up, you know, you know, a couple, see what the game's all about and stuff like that. Speed Coin is an interesting idea from Stern, which kind of plays the role of the quarter that you just popped into the machine. I thought that was an interesting idea. So when you pop the quarter in the machine, and now you have to roll the quarter down into that little gap down below. And you do that by when you hit your, uh, you know, like left and rightness, you'll have the little ramp that will either increase the speed or slow it down and try to get it to go right in there. Yeah, that's what, that's what this game's all about. And if it goes to the very bottom, your coin will shatter. Not good. You get three quarters or three coins per quarter, I suppose. And um, I didn't do it this entire time. I tried it. So I'm going to keep practicing myself. But maybe you saw this in the arcade. Interesting. Another one from Konami here with Time Pilot 84. Well, the game came out in 1984. Let's call it Time Pilot 84. It's the sequel to Time Pilot, basically. I like this version of Time Pilot. Now, Time Pilot is a classic, but this one adds that science fiction that they're really shooting for in the early 80s to have, you know, like Tron and uh, Superman 3. I don't know why I thought of that all of a sudden. Um, remember that creepy scene where like the woman gets sucked into the machine, turns into a robot? Anyway, uh, has nothing to do with this game. Time Pilot 1984 <laughs> it plays a lot like Time Pilot as you're, uh, you're going around shooting, but you can also have missiles too. Um, the heat-seeking missiles, so if you're locked on, you can launch your missile and it'll go straight to where the enemy is. Kind of cool with the Time Pilot 84. Might want to check it out. I love me some Bagman. Uh, I talked about Bagman in the earlier video. Was that 81 when it came out? 82? Something like that. Uh, then here's Bagman, Super Bagman rather, in 1984. It's the same as Bagman. It's like they already had the graphics, they already had the engine, they already had the sound. Let's change up the levels, call it Super Bagman, and have it be basically the same game. And Bagman, is, it's one of those games I wish we got would have got on a home console that I had. Maybe it was available for computer, uh, Commodore 64, maybe, I don't know. I didn't I didn't have a, I wasn't a computer gamer. I was only a console gamer. So basically, if it wasn't on Atari 2600 or NES, I ain't heard of it. But if it was in the arcade, I loved it. And Bagman, loved it. Super Bagman, same. We had the Battle Road. Uh, this is 1984. Now, Spy Hunter came out 1983. And this is a lot like a, it looks like a cartoonier version of Spy Hunter. 
<laughs> or you can shoot the cars in front of you. You can also shoot them to the side of you. Uh, bigger graphics on this game, so bear in mind of those. Yeah, I mean, it's there. Well, here's two tigers. I mean, I guess we had twin cobras. Why not have two tigers? Another flying game. And that's a, there's a lot of arcade games that were based on flying, which is fine, I suppose. It's what they knew. Um, this game, you fly just through the screen over and over and over again. You do not have three lives. You have basically unlimited lives, but you have a time limit, uh, which unfortunately is going to hamper you in the first place, because the more you die, then the more it's going to take you to bomb through these ships that are below you, but there's so many airplanes that are above you, and this moving target, which is going to shoot you down every time, uh, that's usually where I lose the most lives in this game. Cool to see a game like this, though. We had Volgus as well. Volgus, uh, interesting enough, from Capcom, a lot like 1942, only this game is sci-fi and, uh, you know, it, it takes place a little bit futuristic, but still a vertical shooter. I wouldn't be surprised if it was even the same engine as 1942, but it's like, oh, let's change up the graphics, change up the sound, change up the music, change up a couple of things here and there, but it was same same idea, basically. You got your score, you got your, you know, flying around and shooting things and stuff like that. You do have a missile button on this one. And it's another vertical shooter, but this one a little bit more sci-fi. And it seemed like that was kind of the vibe for 1984 video games, uh, arcade games especially. They're like a lot of like airplane flying ones or there was like sci-fi going on. I mean, yeah, sure, 1984, maybe I was more into like Garbage Pail Kids or Transformers or whatever I was watching on TV at the time. And video games were there too. They were still doing cool stuff at the time. Hey, next video I'll be looking at for arcade games is going to be 1985. That's going to be a fun video. I'm looking forward to it. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you very, very soon.